Right. So, um, M1 from uh, summer 2015 with the, uh, the best AS for the maths group. Um, a particle appears projected vertically downwards. So we're going to make sure we get our uh, direction sorted, haven't we? With speed 14 from a point 30 metres above the ground. Calculate the speed of P when it reaches the ground. So, um, well, I, I, you don't need it, but I just did a little diagram because I like drawing little diagrams. So there we go. We've, oh, that's quite thick. We've got it uh, projected downwards. This gap is 30 metres. Here we go with a speed of 14. I think, I don't know, I think it probably makes sense for me to take downwards as being positive because that's the direction that we're moving in. So we've got an initial speed of 14, an acceleration of 9.8 if downwards is positive. We have a distance of 30 metres. We've got, what else do we need? We need to find V. How can we connect U, A, S and V? Well, we're using V squared is U squared is 2 A, S. So V squared is 14 squared plus twice 9.8 times 30, which, did I write, write down V squared? I didn't. I just went straight into saying that that was 28. Once you uh, throw it into your calculator and see what it bits out the other side. There we go, so 28 as the answer for that one. Quite a neat start. Part 2, find the distance travelled by P in the first 0.4 seconds of its motion. Okay, so that's, this V28 doesn't come into this at all, does it? This is a, a kind of a fresh start on this. So we've got our initial speed is 14, our acceleration is 9.8, it's the first 0.4 seconds, so t is 0.4, and we're looking for the distance travelled. We're looking for s, so that seems to be linking together s equals ut plus half a t squared. Again, there's just using what we're given in the question for this, so s is 14 times 0.4 plus a half 9.8 times 0.4 squared, and if you put that into the calculator, we get 6.384 metres. Um, and we remember on the front of the paper, it says give answers to three significant figures, so 6.38 metres to three significant figures. There we go. Okay, calculate the time taken for P to travel the final 15 metres of its descent. All right, well, hang on, this is a bit different, now, isn't it? So we're now thinking of the last, just the last 15 metres. So we're going a distance of 15 metres. Now, I don't know the speed at the start of these final 15 metres. I could probably work it out. I could work it out. But let's see if I can get away without doing that. What else do I know? I know the acceleration is 9.8. I know we're going a distance 15, we've got that down there. Oh, I know the final velocity, don't I? Because I found that in the first part. I know that the final velocity is 28. And I'm interested in how long it took. So what the time is. And I can connect all of those, can't I? Because I've got the other version of that one that says that S is VT minus a half AT squared. That's the other equation that kind of goes in parallel with that one. So I can say that 15 is 28T minus a half times 9.8 T squared. And it looks like I've ended up with a quadratic equation, uh, plus 15, that looks like that. And it's not a particularly nice quadratic equation, I'm not going to spend any time doing any great stuff with it. I'm going to go straight to the formula, minus b uh, which would be 28, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Oh, I know what I've done. I didn't write that in there, did I? Did I? That doesn't look like the, the right answer on the bit of paper. What do we get when we do it? Um, plus or minus... 
it is the right answer. I know what I've done. B squared, 28 minus 4 times 4.9 times 15 gives us 490 inside there. All over 2a, so all over 9.8. And we get two values. We get the values of 0.598 and 5.12. And that's that's the value that we're after. And it's clear that that's the value that we're after, isn't it? Because it travels the first six metres, six and a bit, in 0.4 seconds. And it's accelerating very rapidly, 9.8 metres per second per second. So it seems reasonable that it's not going to take um, you know, another four and a half seconds to travel the last little bit down to the bottom. So that, that feels like that's the right answer for that one. There we go. Are we happy with that? Of course, you could have gone a little bit further around there. You could have worked out what the velocity was halfway down this journey after 15 metres and then use that to calculate what the, the uh, final time would be and do it that way in a couple of stages. I prefer to do it all, all in one go. There we go. And that's maths.